This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a production of Catholic Radio Indy. Now here's today's program. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio. I'm Jim Ganley. Our co-host is Bridget Ayer. Hello. Great to be and with you. Bridget, Thanks for tuning is, in. This is the time of the program where we always kind of um, remind people of different ways they can support Catholic Radio and different things like that. But being the time of the year that it is, I think we ought to just, instead of doing that, we ought to say just two things. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, Merry, I'm done. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, yeah, the holiday season is in full swing, and Christmas and New Year's Eve um, are right here, right now, and 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 more than ever, we need to reach out to those who are isolated due to COVID. And today, our guests are Monica Woodsworth and Joyce Bevins, who are from Catholic Charities, and who will talk to us about how we can support our seniors in a COVID world. So, welcome to Faith in Action, ladies. Thank you. All right, so tell us, I want to start about, I want to talk about the programs that you run at Catholic Charities, what they are, and um, what you do in those um, uh, positions. So um, let's start with Monica. Uh, you taught, you um, are the director of the RSVP program. What is that? Mm -hmm. That stands for Retired and Senior Volunteer Program. Okay. It's there's a network of senior volunteer programs through the federal government, and um, they are for people 55 and over. And Catholic Charity sponsors two of those, both RSVP and the Senior Companions. But RSVP, I'll let Joy speak to the Senior Companion program, but with RSVP, um, there are no income requirements for volunteering, and there's just a lot of flexibility for the volunteers to choose where, when, and how often they volunteer. So we work like a clearinghouse and help people find volunteer opportunities, especially during COVID, um, that may be from home or may be in the community. Now, what's, um, what sort of uh, positions would, would people volunteer for? Would they uh, have need for carpenter, mechanic, typist, data entry? Uh, what, what, what skills? Um, all those skills. We do a really good job of placing people... Um, with their skill set or even if they want to learn something new. So when you're talking about helping with handy, handy person work, it could be an organization we match them with um, NeighborLink where they go in and help seniors and people with disabilities. Um, they're just doing things outside right now to be safe, but cleaning up yards, doing painting, helping with gutters, or it can be people are most comfortable being at home. And so they might start doing a friendly caller opportunity where they're calling someone on a regular basis who is homebound, helping them to feel um, like they're still a part of the community and that they're important. All right. I want to, that's, that's really interesting. And I, I really love that, that whole concept of, of, of the clearinghouse and how you're involved with that. I want to talk about the senior companion program. So Joyce, could you um, talk a little bit about that? Sure. Our program is along with AmeriCorps, too, but um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer program in what we do, the people's wanting, um, they're matched with someone in the community that's homebound. And so they volunteer, they commit to 20 to 40 hours a week after extensive background checks and after um, they meet, they have to meet an income eligibility to be part of our program. And the companions spend time in the home, the homebound person assisting with like housework, errands. They have lunch together and they're working on building a friendship. And our companions do not do personal care, so they're not a home health aide. They're working on building that friendship, but they can do reminders of medication and uh, personal care. We presently have 67 companions right here wow. in Marion wow. County. And during COVID, they've been visiting through uh, the phone, Zoom, porch drop-offs to provide lunches, groceries, picking up prescriptions. And recently, they've started going back into their companion homes. Now, now Joyce, you mentioned, They're you mentioned um, Zoom meetings and seniors, and being a senior myself, I know there's certain things about Zoom meetings and seniors that don't always work out well. What, what sort of uh, results have you had? Have you had a lot of seniors being able to kind of master the Zoom and uh, 
you know, uh, participate that way? So one of our challenges in the program, very few of our seniors actually have Internet, so the phone works a lot better for Mm -hmm. our program. We have about five that are successful with the Zoom (laughs) that, that calls up their clients, and they have lunch together, they watch. One of them watches Prices Right with her client <laughs> through Zoom. <laughs> Very good. But there's only five out of the 67. <laughs> um, and we're working on build, helping them get familiar with Zoom a little better. So maybe for one or both of your organizations, you might be able to use a volunteer who is uh, kind of very tech savvy and maybe helping some of those people get set up to do something like that. Or maybe some of them have a computer they just don't use it for that particular purpose. So maybe there's a volunteer need you might have. And and it sounds like, I think a a lot of times people don't realize how many people don't have internet. And I think that that's some, especially in the lower income um, bracket, I guess, you know, where, you know, this whole thing with, you know, online learning for children. And then, you know, the, the, the population that you're um, working with Joyce, you know, the, the lower income, just, you just don't, you think, oh, everybody has internet, you know, but then you realize, you know, not everybody does. So um, it's, I'm glad that you brought that up and that you're figuring out some ways to work around that. Uh, we're, we're talking with Monica Woodsworth um, and Joyce Bevins from Catholic Charities, and we're going to get into our topic here on helping um, seniors deal with COVID-19 isolation. Um, who wants to take this... Uh, Let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you've had in um, delivering the services that you've, um, both in the different programs that you do, what are some of the challenges that you've had in delivering um, services to your elderly population? Who wants to take that? (laughs) Raise your hand. (laughs) (laughs) All right. This is is Monica. Okay, Monica. Um, And I would say just straight off, Challenges, certainly, but not all seniors, when we're talking about seniors, they're not all experiencing it the same, because just like the younger population, it, when we're talking about senior, we could be talking about somebody from 55 to 110, okay. right? So we have a good 50 years of lots of individuality, yeah. a lot of differences in economic um, stability, a lot of differences in health, so we just have a lot of variety, um, but overall... I feel like COVID has put the spotlight on what was already there. So, and that being a lot of loneliness, a lot of isolation, um, grief, um, increased health risk due to, especially for those people who are minorities and lower income, the increased health risk, um, technology, what you all were just talking about, um, the barriers that technology brings, um, scams. Scams are a really big one right now, Um, and when people are lonely and isolated and somebody is reaching out to them through a scam, that just might sound really good, and unfortunately, it becomes a way that people lose a lot of money. Um, Can you share with us some of the scams that you've heard about? Because I just haven't heard of any scams, and sometimes we do a whole show on scams uh, that, that affect the elderly, but can you, is there any that come to mind that have been happening that you want to let our audience know about? Well, with COVID, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it, it can be about testing. It can be about Mm -hmm. COVID testing. Another big one is romance scams for the older adult population. Um, You know, it it can just be the, the grandchildren where people pretending to be a grandchild and they call in and I need help, send money, or something through the computer or even a phone getting a text message and where it says just click on this link or else something terrible is going to happen. Um, you know, if you don't take care of this issue, so it is people are susceptible no matter how smart we think we are. There are people that spend a lot of time figuring out how to get under your skin and get to your money and take advantage of you. So really, as an older adult, to be aware of that, and if somebody is a caregiver of an over older adult, to be aware that they need to have conversations with older people in their families, their loved ones, to make sure that these things aren't happening. Um, because if it does happen, people are often embarrassed, and they don't want to talk about it, which means things can just snowball and get worse. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I'm curious, um, how, how have you been operating in terms of, um, you know, delivering your services? Can you talk a little bit about how it's been working? You mentioned a little bit earlier in the show about that, but um, Joyce, do you want to talk a little bit about, you, you mentioned it a little bit when we got started here. How's, how, how are things working now? Um, and maybe how did it, how was it working before <laughs> this all happened Then kind of in the middle? And then now, I mean, things have, I don't know if they've gotten better or worse for you. T- talk about that. Well, for our senior companions, before they were visiting in the home mm. um, the whole time. They were mm-hmm. in person, the person to person, that 20 to 40 hours. And then at the beginning, they were at home, I think, until middle of July. And once middle of July hit, they were able to do porch visits and start doing some of the errands. Our challenges, our senior companions, fall into the high risk because they're all over 55. They have multiple health issues. And um, it, the minority piece is also a a, a it's some of the barriers. Mm-hmm. And now they're lonely. I mean, they're lonely and they're wanting to get back to their compan- clients and mm-hmm. work with them. And so they are slowly going back. Some of our client companions have been together mm-hmm. for 5, 10, 15 years. So they are like family and they are friends. We just had a celebration. We um, did a drive through recognition for our companions. And we had 17 celebrating between 5 and 20 years. Wow. Long time. That's amazing. That's really successful, you know, to to have people stay together that long as companions. They're really forming those friendships. Yeah, I would imagine that the uh, seniors that you're dealing with are dealing with the same thing that we all are. That, you know, when this started back in March, it was going to be, okay, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. You've (laughs) got to stay home for two weeks. You've got to do this for two weeks. And then it was, okay, well, it's going to be another week or another two weeks. And it just kept incrementing. And here we are, end of the year. And the programs, in, in a lot of senses, are the same. In some cases, possibly even more restrictive than they were. Uh, Joyce, is that kind of wear on the minds of some of the people that uh, your, your organization deals with? Absolutely. You know, the loneliness has set, has set in. We've noticed deterioration and help in some of our companions who's not getting up every morning and finding that purpose um we get together once a month before covid on education and constantly we're hearing how they miss that and they miss being with each other and you know they built friendships over the years and now they're stuck at the home by themselves or their children are working and the grandchildren are having to do homework at their homes, and so their food bill has went up, even though their income has stayed the same. Or, or in some cases, maybe no income, right? Because they've and lost no their income. job. Yeah, absolutely. We, we need to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to give our audience some tips on how to support seniors. So, stay tuned for more faith in action. You're listening to Catholic Radio Indy, converting the culture to Christ through radio, featuring 100% Catholic programming 24-7. Do your friends a favor. Tell them about Catholic Radio Indy. Have you ever thought about joining the Catholic Church? Have you just wanted to explore the Catholic faith? All you need to do is call your local Catholic Church for more information. We are always happy to help you in your journey to discover and learn more about the Catholic faith. We have classes that are almost year-round, and the classes and information sessions do not involve making a commitment, and there is no pressure to join. Please call your local Catholic parish for more information today and start the journey of one day possibly becoming Catholic as well. God bless. You know us as Catholic Radio Indy, but we're so much more than just radio. We're a website, catholicradioindy.org, with access to great Catholic resources, including podcasts of all our local programming podcasts that have been downloaded from all 50 states and over 40 countries on six continents. Yes, we are Catholic Radio Indy, but thanks to your support, we're taking the gospel of Christ to the ends of the earth. Catholic Radio Indy and CatholicRadioIndy.org. You can hear the Holy Mass every day at 8 a.m. right here on Catholic Radio Indy. 
Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Ayer. Jim Ganley and I are in the studio, and we're talking with our guests via phone and Zoom. We're talking with Monica Woodsworth. She is the RSVP Director at Catholic Charities in Indianapolis, and Joyce Bevins, who is the Associate Director for the Senior Companion Program, also with Catholic Charities. And we're talking about tips on how to support our seniors in a COVID world. And seniors are really kind of defined as age 55 and up. So um, who wants to take the first question here as it relates to tips to supporting seniors? And I know both of your programs do that, but how can our listeners be supportive of others? Go ahead, Monica. Monica. I'll go ahead and start. I, I, I think it's important for all of us to lower our expectations in terms of what support is. Because sometimes we have a viewpoint that, okay, if I'm going to help somebody, I actually have to maybe do a home-cooked meal for them or take them somewhere or spend an hour on the phone with them. And, and that's not really the case. I think if we lower our expectations and just really make an effort when we do communicate with people that we're seeing them and we're hearing them, that we're taking the time to listen and be a presence and it isn't always about the fact that you need to show up, do a task, uh, do something in particular. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's when you bring that up, I'm thinking about, yeah, the, what, what does it mean to support someone? Maybe we start there because <laughs> that can come in many, many forms. Mm-hmm. I, I think that the checking in and giving time is a good place to start, especially right now with our restrictions and, and being safe for the older people in our lives and for ourselves, just being able to have a conversation. But then we take a step back and we need to make sure, is the person we're checking on, do they have the ability to clearly hear what we're saying? Um, do, do they have the ability to see if we're doing something virtual? Do they have the skills to use technology so that they can coordinate? Because I know sometimes with hearing difficulties, when we're able to be face-to-face, you can gauge body language and you can maybe tell if somebody really isn't getting it. Um, but we need to make extra effort. Okay. And Joyce, I have a couple of questions here that it just kind of popped into my mind. Uh, with the Senior Companion Program, um, we were talking about maybe volunteers to contact the seniors, which is important and is a need. But can you? Uh, how would you accept seniors who say, gee, I I think I need that service, how do they become part of the program? They would just call me here at Catholic Charities, and we would, what we do is we match a senior companion usually within a 10-mile radius, and we look at their interests, what they they like to do. So if there's someone who likes gardening, I'm not going to match them to a senior companion that hates gardening. Mm -hmm. Um, and find that common interest for them so they can both enjoy each other's company and build a friendship. Now, and I usually get my referrals like from Veterans Hospital, Eskenazki, different um, community resources. Mm-hmm. Would, you, would you get them from parishes as well? I mean, someone uh, maybe talking to their local pastor or director of religious education or some counselor at a parish saying, boy, this person is really... Uh, lonely, they could really use somebody to talk to. Would uh, that be a source too? We would absolutely love that. That uh, resources and the referrals from them. Unfortunately, we do not get as many as we would. We know that they're out there. People are lonely out there. Just the parishes don't use us like they should, and we would appreciate it if they did. Okay. And, and you mentioned uh, another th- thought I had. Uh, another just kind of a question is uh, in the senior companion program, you were talking about the companions initiating contacts with the clients, so to speak. Uh, can it work the other way around? Is some client just uh, really lonely today? Can they, the client, reach out and initiate the call, or does it always go the other direction? No, it's ab- absolutely both ways now because they're together, they've built that friendship, and they have we have long-term um, companionships. So I often hear how the client calls and checks in on, on them, as well as the senior companion calling and checking on in on the client. Okay. And, and Monica, you had something that you wanted to add there? 
I did. You you mentioned um, the parish is making referrals for people to be to be a client in the senior companion program. But let's also think about the fact that just because somebody is lonely doesn't mean that they themselves can't become a volunteer, um, that they themselves aren't a great conversationalist, and so making them the volunteer, calling somebody else, can work out too. So we just, instead of always thinking how, how can we help seniors, let's give them the respect of, of knowing that they're able to offer something too, and that by, by being able to offer something, that really does help us maintain a better sense of, of well-being and self-worth. So we want to pull everything we can out of people who are willing to give to make the whole community better. So what about letter writing? What are some other ways that people can can reach out to? Uh, and, and should people be reaching out just to their neighbors? Like maybe they're not connected to one of these programs, but relatives, neighbors, people maybe they haven't talked to in a while. Any thoughts about that? Absolutely. I mean, if you have a phone number or can knock on a door and do a safe, um, a safe type of communication, just I, I think it's, it's positive for all of us to know that someone's thinking about us, right? And again, remembering that it doesn't have to be, I'm here to do something for you. What aren't you able to do for yourself? It can just be, I'm thinking about you, I care about you, and let's, again, have a stronger community. Let's care for each other. Or, you know, I, I knocked on my neighbor's door and said, I realize that I, I don't even have their phone number, but they live next door and just said, hey, you know, just knocked on their door. Hey, you know, we know each other. We've been neighbors for a long time. Just, said, you know, if you ever need anything, here's my here's my cell phone or here's my phone number. Just give me a call. If you if you need something, just just let us know. And we're right next door. I mean, nothing, it was just like a two minute, two minute conversation when they're, you know, at their door, you know, and um, so just some, some things like that. I, we got about about five minutes left and I want to get into resources because I know you have some things that you want to point our listeners to um, who wants to start with with some resources I can do that okay Monica um, this is Monica so we have a couple of different things with people being connected there is a program actually called well connected where people can call on the phone or go online it's a national program it's small group socializing. You meet people all across the United States. It could be a book discussion. It could be a tour of somewhere. But it's just getting to know other people and having something to look forward to. Um, there's also an organization online called Time Slips. And there's a resource. It's called Beautiful Questions. And these are questions that you can ask somebody. They have no right or wrong answers. It's just meant as... Um, you know, getting to know somebody and exploring something and, and just being able to have a conversation without thinking, well, I'm going to say something wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, also, 211, which locally is our, our, our resource hotline and phone and online system where you can go and look for resources if you might need food or support groups or transportation, things like that. Um, I, I'm going to pop in with one thing to remember is if you are able to offer something specific, like when you were talking to your neighbor, um, you know, let me know. Sometimes people think, oh, you're so busy, I don't want to be a burden. We hear this all the time, I don't want to be a burden. So if sometime you're going to the grocery store and you can pop over and say, I'm on my way, can I pick something up for you while I'm there, they might be more receptive to that. Yeah, that's a great point. I'll keep, uh, I got to go back over there now. <laughs> Joyce, did you have um, anything else that you wanted to add in terms of resources? I know that um, how I even got connected with the two of you was I noticed that you had a webinar on this very topic. I, I'm just wondering how that went. And um, I know that there's a way that people can get that um, at, at a later date. Um, you want to talk about the, the webinar that you guys did? and how that went? Sure. Um, it started off as a program here at Senior Companions. Mm -hmm. We were making sunshine bags for the veterans, and Teresa, I did a, a PowerPoint on loneliness. Teresa happened to see the PowerPoint, and then Monica and I worked together to develop it more for the community, and uh, we were able to present that. And it went really well. 
um, we were we felt we both Monica and I felt good about it being able to provide resources outside of just the two programs that we work with and within the community. I'd love for you, for one of you to give the website that, um, that you have and that people can go to kind of as a launching pad for a lot of these resources and what they'll find when they go to the website. So this is Monica. I would say the best way, the best thing to do is go to the Catholic Charities Indianapolis website, which you can get to at helpcreatehope.org. You'll see a square for programs. Click on the programs and then another link for seniors. And through that, you would be able to get to either myself or Joyce, and it gives phone numbers and email. So we just have a couple minutes left. Um, What's it been? Love for each of you to tell us a little bit about how this has impacted you or how this being helping seniors, helping the communities that you're working with, how has that kind of impacted your faith? Go ahead, Mon. Oh, <laughs> you're pointing to each other. <laughs> well, working with the senior companions is the most humbling experience I've ever had. Um, I went to school to be a drug and alcohol counselor and ended up working full time with seniors and absolutely have loved working here. And as far as my faith, it just helps grow every day. So I'm grateful for this opportunity to work with them. And Monica? It, it, yeah, it really is an opportunity to see the strength that people carry with them. Um, and they may not see that in themselves initially, but, but it's there. And, and just knowing the, the depth of that and how people are reaching out to look for ways to help, I mean, that is the most we can ask for is, is caring for each other, I think, in terms of faith. Well, we are out of time. I want to thank our guest today, Monica Woodsworth. She is the RSVP Director at Catholic Charities Indianapolis, and Joyce Bevins, the Associate Director for the Senior Com- Senior Companions Program, also from Catholic Charities of Indianapolis. Um, thanks so much for being our guest today. I want to give um, the uh, website one more time. It's helpcreatehope.org. So thanks so much, and Merry Christmas to everyone, and Merry Christmas to you ladies. Thanks, thanks for the, your wonderful work. You have been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a presentation of Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear this episode of Faith in Action again or any past episode at catholicradioindy.org. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic for a future program, please call us at 317-870-8400 or email jim at catholicradioindy.org.